My name's Amy Bean. I'm a clinical support with SABO. This is part one of our online training series for electrical stimulation on the upper limb. And in part one, we're going to look at the basics of electrical stimulation and what it actually is. So it's the elicitation of a muscle contraction using electrical pulses. So the picture on the left shows the electrical stimulation device in blue. This is sending an electrical signal it's transmitted through those white electrodes that are stuck to the skin over the target muscle. This electrical signal will generate a muscle contraction. Electrical stimulation is therefore a useful tool in any rehabilitation program. In this series, we're specifically going to focus on neurological injuries, but it can also be used in other areas such as orthopedic injuries. The criteria would be that the muscle needs to have an intact nerve for it to be appropriate. And this can be even used even when there's little or no movement after a neurological injury, such as a stroke or head injury. So the reasons why you may choose to use it would be to improve motor impairment. So in this instance, this example in the picture, this is on the forearm, wrist and finger extensors. So it could be used to start to work on that movement to extend the wrist, open the fingers with a view to start getting that hand towards doing an everyday task. So it can help re-educate movement as well as every time the stimulation happens, counting to those all important repetitions. So you can use it to re-educate movement and also strengthen weakened muscles. Every time this stimulation happens and a muscle contraction work, muscles keep firing and they, you are therefore working on trying to increase or at the very least maintain muscle bulk after the injury. It's also a useful adjunct if there's spasticity to try and reduce that. So again, in this example, when the wrist and finger extension occurs, it will be stretching the flexor muscles, which may have some spasticity in. This can help reduce the stretch threshold and have a positive impact on reducing spasticity. And there's good research to support this. There are different types of electrical stimulation out there and the terminology can be quite confusing. Sometimes it's used incorrectly so we're just going to clarify what each of the abbreviations mean when you see them online. So ES, it stands for electrical stimulation. You may also see this as EMS or E-STIM. TENS stands for transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, which is a mouthful. And I'm going to go through what each of these actually is on the next slide. Then got NMES, which is probably most commonly used stands for neuromuscular electrical stimulation. FES is functional electrical nerve stimulation. We've got triggered ES, which is triggered stimulation. And then SES, which stands for sensory electrical stimulation. Very occasionally, SES may be used for surface electrode stimulation. So just double check. So ES is a general umbrella term for electrical stimulation. TENS very specifically is used for pain relief. So it works by blocking the pain signal sent to your brain. There's also some theories that it releases the body's natural endorphins, which can help as pain relief. NMES is specific to the muscle stimulation being used after a neurological injury. And sometimes these terms, NMES and TENS, are interchanged incorrectly. FES is where the muscle contraction that's stimulated is used to help practice a specific task. So if, again, thinking about wrist and finger extension, if that movement when it occurs is used to help get the hand around a cup to be able to pick it up, that's where it becomes FES. We've then also got triggered stimulation. So as it suggests, this is where a trigger is used to elicit the stimulation rather than a duty cycle or a preset time cycle. So often you will have maybe eight seconds on for the stimulation and then a rest period of five seconds. 
This will keep repeating itself for a preset time. This makes it more difficult to use this stimulation within practice in a task or a movement. So by having a trigger option, you can override this issue with timing and can control exactly when the stimulation comes off. So different ways that this trigger can be used might be using a button such as with our Sabre Stim Pro. It might be a movement sensor. She's quite commonly used with electrical stimulation devices for foot drop where the person moves through range to trigger the stimulation. It may be through EMG. So that's somebody's own muscle activity to trigger the stimulation. So they need to have some flickers of activity when they use that movement they hit a threshold and then the stimulation kicks in to take them through the rest of the range. Finally, sensory electrical stimulation. So this is commonly delivered by electro mesh garments, but you can use electrodes. The benefit of the garments is it disperses the stimulation over a broader area rather than a more pinpoint focus with the electrodes. So when this is used, there's no muscle contraction generated. It's purely to maximize sensory input and stimulate the sensory system. When setting up, ideally, you would set the intensity up to be just underneath their sensory threshold. Clinically, why you would choose to use this is it's a useful adjunct for spasticity management to reduce the overactivity. It can help promote motor activity because we're stimulating the sensory system and they can be carryover. And most importantly, it can influence neuroplasticity as well as improve sensation. But it's worth noting that it's more than just um, sensory impairments that you may choose to use sensory stimulation. So the different ways that the stimulation can be delivered through the devices, it may be just through one single channel. So you would have one muscle stimulated at any one time. And this could be a wireless option or it could be one wire coming out of the device. You might have dual channel. This would enable you to stimulate two muscles at the same time. It could be that there's an alternating program. So one channel comes on, has a rest, and then the second channel comes on and has a rest. So a nice example of this would be a muscle pairing such as biceps and triceps for elbow flexion and then elbow extension. You can also get some devices that have an overlap. So one channel comes on and then the other channel after a delay comes in and joins it at the same time. You may also get a device that is multi-channel for example, up to four channels to use over a much wider area. So a commonly used um, reason to choose this might be for pain relief using TENS over a much broader area, or is a spinal cord injury when you're trying to stimulate a number of muscles um, at any one time to, to generate a movement. So we're gonna go through some video examples to show you these in context. So this video example is NMES. So this is neuromuscular electrical stimulation after a stroke. Channel one is on triceps to work on elbow extension. Channel two is on wrist and finger extension. So he's not practicing a task, so it's not FES. Our next example is FES. So you can see there is a coffee jar. So the stimulation is on wrist and finger extension. Stimulate the opening of the hand so that they can get their hand around that coffee jar. When the stimulation turns off, they can grasp it to undo the lid. And then the stimulation is going to come on again. That's going to help them open their hand and let go of the jar. So this is just using one channel. This example is NMES. So this is for shoulder subluxation. So this is where there is a gap um, at the top of the upper limb. And you'll see when this wireless device, the Sabre Stim 1 comes on, 
contracts the rotator cuff muscles to reduce that gap. This is on a timed cycle, so it will come on for eight seconds and switch off for eight seconds and will run for 60 minutes. You could then choose to run the cycle again. So the benefit of it being wireless in this instance, it can be used when this person is move around, moving around and maybe doing other tasks at the same time, rather than being hooked to, up to and having to carry a device. This is a picture snapshot of sensory stimulation, just to show you an example setup. So we've got an electro mesh glove on the hand, an electro mesh glove on the sleeve, would use a conductive cream underneath both garments, just like you would have a sticky gel to the back of an electrode. And it's hooked up to a preset program for sensory stimulation on our Stim Pro. You may also want to combine electrical stimulation with other technologies. So this example shows somebody practicing a task. So it becomes FES. They've got stimulation on wrist and finger extensors, and they've got an orthotic on the, on the hand to give the wrist and fingers more support when they're opening the hand. So it may be that this hand has some tightness, it might have a little bit of spasticity, and they need the two technologies to really facilitate opening of the hand. So the stimulation is not on when they're grasping. So you're ready to lift. When they want to let go, the stimulation comes on. And in this instance, they are using a trigger button so that they can time exactly as the person reaches forward and when they're ready to let go, rather than having to work around the time cycle. So the benefits of having the orthotic on the top, rather than um, it would enable full extension of the fingers and giving wrist support rather than being doing more of a flex posture, even though the stimulation is being used. So this concludes part one of our series. Thank you for watching and keep tuned for part two, where we'll go through parameters and settings and also look at electrodes with electrical stimulation devices.